Hi there, this is Alvin with kickstartcommerce.com and I'm back with another tutorial for today. And today's tutorial actually builds on a part one and a part two. So part one of this tutorial is called Integrating WP Pop-Up and MailChimp to Create a Growing uh, Mailing List. And so you can go to kickstartcommerce.com, search for um, either one action small business websites fail at or just go over to um, our YouTube channel or visit like I said just visit kickstartcommerce.com and search for this tutorial and essentially what has happened is uh, there have been a number of you all who watch the videos and tutorials from time to time who have questioned and asked me whether or not the pop-up that is created by the WP pop-up plugin can it include images and so one of the things um, and I'll show you here on one of my test sites so one of the things that happens is that uh, the pop-up um, it, it's nothing more than just a simple newsletter pop-up that is integrated with MailChimp so that when people arrive on your site then you can provide them with the pop-up to enter in their first name and email address and then tie that back to your MailChimp newsletter list and so the short answer to the question is can a image be added to the WP pop-up plugin yes it can be uh, and, and it can happen a couple of ways. So that being said, the first way it can happen is you go and buy the upgrade plugin. So WP Pop-Up plugin is free initially. However, to get extended feature uh, features and capabilities, you need to upgrade to the premium plugin to be able to add images that you would like. Now, if you're like me and you're more of a do-it-yourselfer and you don't really feel like paying $27 one-time fee or up upgrades to the plugin year after year after year, then there is another way. Um, now one of the other ways is me just being funny here. You could always go and use another plugin that is free and that offers uh, the capability. I'll cover another video on my top four choices about plugins that, that are uh, actually provide a pop-up and a beautiful or aesthetically pleasing um, pop-up for your website. This third way though, I'm going to actually show you how to go in and add code to your site, a little bit of JavaScript. Most uh, WordPress websites already operate within the realm of using jQuery. And so I'm going to show you uh, some quick jQuery code as well as provide you that code so you can Add a picture to your pop-up. So let's get started by logging in. And once you log in, one of the first things that we're going to do is to go and install a plugin. And I've already installed the plugin, but if you don't know how to install a plugin, you simply go to plugins, go to add new. And it is called, I believe it's called uh, script. Script and scripts and styles, and we'll get pulled up here. And you can see I've already installed it. If it were not installed on yours, you would see install now. So do not install scripts and styles. This is scripts in styles. So it is uh, created by Unfocused Projects. So go ahead and get that installed, and then head over to your plugins. And you can go ahead and activate. And then once you activate, under Tools, you should see Scripts and Styles. So Scripts and Styles is already there. So I, because I've already installed this, there is CSS code, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to actually remove it so that you can see this pop-up. And I'm going to remove this code as well save the changes so this tool basically what it does is it allows you to place CSS and JavaScript coding anywhere throughout your site and so I like using the plugin you could easily do this by going to the appearance and editor and 
uh, modifying either your header or your footer page. For those who are, are less techy or nervous about actually changing those theme files, then this plugin will do the trick for you. So that being said, make sure that you have, I already have WP pop-up plugin installed, and I do have a newsletter here. We'll open it up. Just something simple uh, here with the H3 tag, three benefits, H4 tag that I leave blank. You can put something in there if you like. Then you can enter your first name, last name, and then whatever your text is on the button. So you can update that. I already have it enabled. Yes. Um, I have it set to show basically half a second. So when a, a user logs on. Now you can set the cookies. I'm setting it to zero days only because I want to show you the example in this tutorial. That being said, if you didn't, I mean, you may want to set this to seven days, 365 days, six months. Me personally, I set it to like two weeks um, just because a typical person, at least on my blog, is going to show up about every two to three days. And so, I mean, I can put it as low as seven. I can put it as low as three if I want it. But uh, you need to figure out what and how often people are, are visiting from your site don't go and put it anything I wouldn't put it beyond 30 days um, would be my take on it so set it to whatever you feel is right I'm setting it to zero again just to show you uh, moving on so I open up another browser here just to show you what it looks like so this is the site there's the pop-up we'll get it again And so it'll reload here. And then once it loads, there is the pop-up. So that's what the pop-up looks like. It's not really pleasing. I mean, yes, it does get the job done. But hey, you ask the question, can an image be added? Um, can a little bit more be done to this to make it more appealing? And the answer is yes. So let's get down to business here. And we'll start making modifications. So... One of the things um, that you'll need to do here, let's go to the tools, scripts and styles. So you want to be able to add an image. So one of the things that you'll need to do, I'll provide you with this code on the blog as well as hopefully you'll be able to see it here, which is this code here. Um, and let me change and so it's not in plain text let's get it in JavaScript there we go get a little color going on alright so this is basically uh, the jQuery script that you're going to use now I have provided and I'm going to provide a more um, enhanced version of this so that uh, those of you that are a little skeptical about adding code and doing it yourself and you're not a programmer it'll make you feel right at home, it'll make you feel comfortable and okay making changes. But this is the script, you start out with a jQuery on ready, and then you have to figure out where this main div is. So, real quick, um, if we pull up, and I'm using Google Chrome, and if you go to Google Chrome, go to More Tools, Developer Tool, we have to figure out where this um, where this div is and and whether or not it has a what's called a div ID or a unique ID it's almost just like you having a social security number it is only um, unique to you that being said you turn on developer tools click the select element icon that I'm hovering over here then when you start hovering you can see it's highlighting and it's showing you different different names so one of the things that I do is I'll hover until I get right inside that square, click it, and then down below it highlights it. So it, now it lets me know that's the div that I'm highlighting. If I go and scroll up over another div, then it'll highlight that as well. And so the div that we're after is this ID div here, default theme dash auto dash pop up dash 102. This will change based upon your pop-ups. And so I'm going to open up a, another tab here. And in this tab, I'll show you 
that default theme. And so one is, if you have the question of, well, where do I find my link, my uh, pop-up link ID? It's right here to the right. So I found it. It was listed there as 102. The other thing is, if you change the the default theme style. So if you go with any of these themes, it's likely to change the name of this div. So you have to kind of watch it. Either way, as long as you find this WPP underscore pop-up underscore default underscore theme or whatever the name of the theme is there, as long as you can highlight that square, or rather select and highlight, then you just look one level up, which is right here, and look for that ID. And whatever it says there, that's what you're going to want to copy and paste. And we go back into the scripts and styles, or rather to our code. And once you paste that, you'll take whatever you pasted there and put it here. And because it's an ID, make sure you put the pound sign. If it were class, you put the period. But because it's an ID, put the, put the pound or the hash sign. So now that we've identified, hey, we found where the pop-up is, then the next question that we do is just a little logic. And you don't necessarily have to have it, but I always encourage it because you never know. Um, this div may not, it may not load the pop-up for some reason. The, the uh, plugin may stop working. Nevertheless, what I'm asking is, is the div um, current? Is it there? Is, has it been set on the page once it's loaded? If yes, then it goes ahead and it'll go ahead and run the uh, next bit of code. Here I include a variable that's the pop-up image. I include some HTML in there, image tag, and then I include the link to where I'm hosting the uh, image file. And there's the complete link, kickstartcomtest.com forward slash WP dash content slash upload slash 2016 slash 08 slash Jenkins logo. So, yeah, we're going to use the Jenkins logo here, little gentleman that looks like a butler. And then here, the last thing that I'm telling it to do is basically once you find where this ID is, that div ID, within that div ID, then go and find this component and so there is a list and so if we go back to the pop-up this is what's called a bulleted list well if you hover over this bulleted list or even just highlight that first one you can see it is ul and then it is contained inside of another div called sub dash content so when we go back to the code you look and now you can see, remember I said when you use a class, you use the period, sub underscore content space UL. Then you're going to pop that image before, or you could go after, either or, you're choosing. But pop the image in, and you can look at this code either uh, online or uh, I'll provide a link to you where you can actually download the code. So that's the code. We copy paste it, go back, paste it there at the end. So we always want to make sure to place the code at the end because we don't want to place it in the beginning in the head, which is right above it. You don't want to place it in this one. You want to place it in the one that's going to end. And so we go ahead and we'll save it. And we'll go back to the browser here. And kill that. And voila, we've added an image. Okay, so now you go, okay, we've added an image. Big deal, so what? It still looks horrible. So how do we go about changing the CSS and then maybe the layout of a few of these and maybe the background? Well, the good thing is, again, you can either up upgrade to the uh, premium plugin or you can do what we're about to do next, which is add a bit of CSS code to the uh, scripts and styles plugin section called CSS styles. So I've already developed um, a bit of code and it's not the best here, not the best CSS code. Let me put it on CSS so we can get 
There we go. But basically what I've done is I'm going to take that same pop-up. And again, yours may be different based on what theme you select and based on the number of your um, WP pop-up. And you can have more than one pop-up. So if you have more than one pop-up, then what you're likely going to have to do is either create multiple of these or you'll have to uh, basically assign or give a distinct class to the pop-up whereby it'll be applied to all your pop-ups. That being said, I just want to apply it to this one. And what I did is, and I'll go ahead and paste the CSS here, and you'll see the difference. So we'll save it, go back, refresh, boom. I've changed the background color. I, I added a little space between the header. I spaced out the benefits, the features, the, um, the image is still there. I added a gradient to the background. Um, so what I did or how I did that is they have a site that actually will provide you with the code and it's a free site. And so here's the code that's provided and you can go in and change any of these. It's called CSSPortal.com and just click over to the CSS generators. And basically you copy all of the code that's in there into your CSS. Now, one big uh, caveat here with this tool is that you'll notice, so the tool itself does not add one thing that is important and that's what we're talking about it's actually the CSS uh, component or rather the syntax important so you'll need to add where I have it highlighted which is exclamation important so space exclamation important at the very end of each one of these for it to take reason being is that if not it will take whatever the native WP pop-up CSS is. And so you can change all of this um, to be whatever. That being said, that's that's how you that's how you add an image to it. And like I said, you can change a variety of these things. Matter of fact, I'll show you what happens if you place it after. Go back. I load there's what it looks like to go after. Now, if you wanted to, you come in, go back to that CSS, change this to right, change this to before, save it, go back, and now the image switches sides, and there it is. So this image, I just use Jenkins, but it could be a book, it could be a giveaway, one of your products, um, anything. And so you can also change uh, the width of this. Like I said, it'll require you to go in and identify um, CSS uh, changes that'll be made and the correct divs to be able to expand this. But I'll tell you what, you learn to do this yourself, it's a lot easier than um, going out and continuously paying for a plugin. If not, go ahead and pay for the plugin. Trust me, there are a few plugins that are more than um, I'm more than willing to pay for. And so one of those being uh, Pop-Up Domination. Uh, it is a great plugin, worth every dime, penny. Um, it, it's just worth it. It's definitely worth it. So if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go in. Run a quick search here and you will explore and see pop-up domination and all of its rich features it has to offer. Like I said, you'll pay for it, but it's worth it in every single way. So that's it. I hope this tutorial helped you out. Like I said, if if uh, hopefully you continue to use WP um, pop-up login. If not, then feel free to switch to another login. Until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks.